Hello everyone. So today we'll be studying about the pectoral region and the axilla. Uh, usually this topic comes under the module which is musculoskeletal system, but I feel this is a very high yield topic in a way that uh, the pectoral region forms the anterior chest wall as well as as well as really important to study about the axilla, since most of the structures uh, traversing from the neck region are going down the axilla into our arm. So it's really important to know what forms the boundaries of the axilla and what are the structures which are present inside our axilla. Uh, most commonly, the most important one is, uh, we all know that, that's the brachial plexus. Okay, so we'll be starting uh, the lecture. So I feel before we come on to axilla, I feel it's really important to study about the pectoral region because that forms the anterior wall, the anterior boundary of the axilla. So we can't really know about axilla if we don't study about the pectoral region. As well as we'll be going over the backs, uh, we'll be going over the muscles of the back. Uh, so that would be later on. So let's start. So, so whenever we talk about the pectoral region, I'm sure uh, those who go a lot uh, in the gym, uh, who work out a lot, I'm sure they have heard the word pectoralis major before. So that is the major muscle, which actually forms the anterior chest wall. Okay. The, the muscle that's coming on your screen is the uh, pectoralis major. Uh, it's the muscle highlighted in green. It's a bilateral muscle. It basically covers most of the anterior chest area. So this is our skeleton. Um, you can call him skelly. So the skelly has the, um, the pectoralis major, the muscle is actually situated just anterior to the rib cage over here. Uh, as we all know, a muscle has an origin and an insertion. And another thing about the muscle as a whole, uh, the muscle tissues that it has a really basic function and that is to contract. So I think of the muscular, the musculoskeletal system, specifically the muscle part, really boring organ or tissue, as is its only function is to shorten in length, that is it, con that is, it uh, contracts. So what happens while it contracts, it has an origin and it has insertion. The origin is usually the fixed part and the insertion is the place where the muscle is attached by its tendon. So whenever the muscle contracts, whenever it contracts, it pulls the uh, insertion side uh, along with it. So this is the main idea which you have to keep in mind whenever you are studying about the musculoskeletal system. So like you were saying, this muscle has uh, an origin and insertion. So actually it has multiple origins. So we can see that over here, uh, the pectoralis major is actually coming from the clavicle. So it has a, a, a clavicular uh, part as origin and it has a sternal part. And you can see uh, all of the muscle fiber are actually terminating on the uh, humerus. Let me bring a humerus in front of you. This is our humerus. This is, uh, so this is the left humerus. And this is the greater tubercle, if you guys can see. This is the head, this is the shaft. This is the surgical neck. This is the anatomical neck. This is the greater tubercle. The protuberance, which is at the lateral part is the greater tubercle. And this medial protuberance is the uh, lesser tubercle. So, and between these two tubercles, we have the intertubercular groove. This muscle actually attaches itself to the, so if we can see this humerus, this humerus has a greater tubercle and a lesser tubercle. And if we follow the, those tubercles down, so the greater tubercle forms the lateral lip of the intertubercular groove and the lesser tubercle forms the medial lip of the intertubercular groove. So this pectoralis major is actually attaching itself. So it's actually attaching itself to the lateral lip, which is uh, of the intertubercular groove. So if you can see over here, we have the pectoralis major and it's attaching itself right over here. So my hand is the pectoralis major and the insertion is at the anterior part of the uh, humerus. So what will happen is that when the muscle contracts, when the muscle contract, it will medially rotate, it will medially rotate the humerus. So if this is our humerus, this is our humerus. And when the muscle contracts, so it will pull the muscle along with it. In doing so, it will adduct the humerus, it will adduct the humerus and it will medially rotate the humerus itself. You can visualize if it's attached over here, if, I, if I'll contract it, if I'll contract it, so it will medially rotate and it will, if the, my arm is abducted, it will adduct the humerus. I hope it makes sense. This is in the diagram. So we have the sternal head, we have the clavicular head and it is attaching where, I hope you guys know, it's the uh, lateral lip of the intertubercular group. 
So the function, as in as we have written it down, the function of pectoralis major is to perform the adduction and it medially rotates the upper limb. Innervation, it's really important uh, whenever you talk about muscles in general. Its function is really important. Usually, origin and insertion are not that important. Examiners don't like to go for uh, dwell a lot upon the origin and insertion of the muscle, but they do like to test the students regarding the innervation and the function. So I have written both of these things down. So we know the function it adducts and medial rotates the upper limb, and the innervation is bilateral and medial pectoral nerves. Just we'll we'll have these pectoral nerves coming up again. So just keep that in mind. So as we go downwards, we have another muscle that is pectoralis minor. So if pectoralis major was the anterior most muscle, uh, pectoralis minor is just posterior to uh, pectoralis major. As you can see, its origin is coming from this is the first rib, second rib, third rib. So it's originating from third, fourth, and fifth rib. And it's actually inserting at which part? Can you guess? So it's actually inserting at the coracoid process of the scapula. So this is our scapula. This is the costal surface. And this, uh, so this is the costal surface and this is the posterior surface. The so posterior surface has the spine, which divides the uh, scapula into infraspinous fossa and uh, supraspinous fossa and infraspinous fossa. Uh, let me grab my chair. So supraspinous fossa and infraspinous fossa, this is the spine and it follows to become the acromion process. So anterior most part, this is the coracoid process. I hope you can see this is the coracoid process. This is the glenoid cavity. This is the glenoid cavity. This is supraglenoid tubercle. This is infraglenoid tubercle. Uh, and this is the subscapular fossa. So where the pectoralis minor is inserting, it's inserting at the coracoid process. This is inserting at the coracoid process. Let's see on our diagram. So the, uh, on the on our model, so we have the rib cage and the pectoralis major is originating from, this is the first, second, originating from the third rib, third, fourth, and fifth rib. And it's, it goes all the way back and it attaches on the uh, coracoid process. Why are we studying? Uh, so the thing, if you are studying about um, the scapula in general, you need to know that the scapula doesn't actually have a prominent joint on the body. So how is it, the question arises, how is it actually attached? How is it actually attached to the body? So what happens is, so just imagine the, the scapula sitting right on top of the rib cage, and there are a lot of muscles, a lot of muscular attachments uh, along the borders of the scapula, which help scapula to keep in place uh, and there are a lot of movements uh, which bring about because of these uh, insertions. So the scapula can move in various directions. If the scapula was to move uh, superiorly, so we call, we call this elevation. If the scapula is moving in this direction, we call it depression. If the scapula was moving in this direction, this, if the scapula was moving in this direction, this is protraction. Whenever we reach our arm outwards, whenever we reach our arm outwards, we're actually making the scapula move outward. This is protraction. And whenever we bring the scapula backward, whenever we bring our arm humerus backwards, we are actually protracting the scapula. So we have elevation, depression, protraction, retraction, and the scapula can also move upwards in an upward direction or in the downward direction. So the rotation of scapula, like this is called upward rotation and the rotation of scapula in a downward manner is called uh, downward rotation. So the pectoralis minor, as you can imagine, it's actually uh, originating from the third, fourth and fifth ribs and it's inserting at the coracoid process. So when it will shorten, you can imagine it will bring the, so if we can see over here, so if it's contracting, it's attaching on the scapula over here. So it will bring the scapula towards itself. So actually what's happening, it's stabilizing the uh, scapula on the rib cage. It's actually moving the scapula anterior inferior. Uh, in other words, it's actually helping the scapula stay put on the uh, rib cage. This is a, another image in which we can see uh, the origin of the pectoralis major, pectoralis minor, and it's inserting at the coracoid process. And when it will contract, it will bring the scapula, which is posteriorly on the anterior side and inferior side. So what's the function of pectoralis minor? That is that it stabilizes the scapula by drawing it uh, anterior and fairly against the thoracic wall. I hope it makes sense. So innervation is by medial pectoral nerve. Um, and we studied about the pectoral nerve also in the uh, pectoralis major. Another muscle which is present uh, on the anterior chest wall that is the serratus anterior. Uh, as the name states, serratus means sawtooth. 
So you can see that so what happens is the serratus anterior has many origins all along the rib cage. It originates from the anterior most uh, it originates from the anterior most side of the anterior most side of the rib cage, and it goes all the way backwards. It goes all the way backwards. And if you can see over here, if you can see, so it goes all the way backwards, but not anterior to the scapula, but it goes just beneath the scapula. It goes, so if I take this scapula, the serratus anterior originates from the anterior side, goes backwards. And if we use this scapula, it goes on the anterior surface, it goes on the anterior surface and insert itself on the medial aspect of the uh, scapula. So if I have a paper, so it's actually going all the way backwards, all the way backwards, and inserting just on the medial aspect, just on the medial aspect of the scapula. So what it does is when it contracts, it uh, it pulls the scapula downwards, and in doing so, it actually rotates the scapula. It actually rotates the scapula. And what is this rotation? Is this downward rotation or is this upward rotation? So when it contracts, when the medial part contracts like this, so it's actually moves the scapula upward. So this is a medial rotation. This is, uh, this is a upward rotation. Sorry. Sorry. So this is a upward rotation. And in doing so, it helps the humerus, uh, in abduction more than 90 degrees. So again, another picture, this is the origin of the, uh, serratus anterior all along the ribcage and it's inserting, it's going backward, inserting on the medial border of the scapula. So if this is the scapula, the posterior surface it inserts over here and then it contracts the scapula moves, uh, rotates upward. It rotates upwards like this. So this is the costal surface of the scapula. This is the costal surface. And this is the medial border of the scapula where it's actually inserted. So all over here, you would find the, um, over this side, you will find the uh, serratus anterior, which is going all the way here and then inserting over here. So it functions. Uh, like I said, the function of the serratus anterior is to rotate the scapula, allowing the arm to be raised. Basically, it is allowing, uh, allowing uh, um, more than 90 degree uh, overhead abduction. So as we know, abduction is divided into different phases. The initial part of abduction is done by what muscle? So if you're thinking supraspinatus, you're right. So the initial part is done by supraspinatus. Uh, till 90 degree, uh, the abduction is being done by the deltoid. And when... Uh, we achieve the 90 degree uh, angle that you can't really move your humerus upwards anymore unless you change the position of the scapula in a way that it allows the humerus to go upwards. So there are two muscles which actually enable the humerus uh, to move upwards. That one is that we're talking about that is the serratus anterior and the other is uh, the trapezius muscle. So probably one of the most highest yield, one of the most high yield things about this lecture is that um, the serratus anterior is innervated by the long thoracic nerve, but that is not the high yield thing about it. The high yield thing is the deficit, which is caused after the long thoracic nerve is damaged. Uh, as the name states, uh, it runs, it's a very long nerve. Uh, it just arises at the starting of the brachial plexus. So it, it has a relatively longer course than most other nerves. It runs superficially, so it's prone to get damaged. And in doing so, the examiners love to ask this question that, uh, where are the region in which the long thoracic nerve is damaged? So it can be damaged in the axilla. So if there's any procedure which involves uh, uh, the removal of any tumor or removal of lymph nodes or any abscess or sinuses, uh, you can damage the long thoracic nerve. Uh, you can also damage the long thoracic nerve along its course at various regions. For example, uh, it's a very common injury uh, uh, during stabbing. And you can also damage the long thoracic nerve if, those, if someone has, uh, for instance, pneumothorax and you place a chest tube at the mid axillary line. So if you're not doing it correctly, you can damage the serratus anterior. Okay, so we have discussed the reasons which can cause the damage to long thoracic nerve. Now let's talk about the deficit. So what will happen? So you, what usually happens is when I press on the wall, my scapula slides on top of the ribcage, right? It doesn't come out, it slides on the top of ribcage because there are a lot of muscular attachment which is keeping the scapula in place. But if there's damage to this long thoracic nerve, so they'll, you'll actually lose the attachment of the muscle on the medial wall. You'll actually lose that attachment. So if you lose this attachment, whenever you'll ask the patient to, whenever you'll ask the patient, whenever you'll ask the patient to basically um, press against the chest wall, 
they will be winging of scapula they will be what they will be winging of scapula that is instead of sliding like this it will come like this i hope it makes sense so we don't really need this we want the scapula to be on top of the uh, rib cage but it's not doing so so that is called winging of scapula and it's most commonly caused by damage to long thoracic nerve uh, you can see the image so on the left side uh, on the left side uh this this phenomena which is occurring so we have normal back normal scapula on the right side but we have winged scapula on the left side and it's basically accentuated when you ask the patient uh when if you want to test it you want to ask the you want to give a command that press against the against the wall then you will be able to observe the winged scapula on the back side i hope this makes sense let's come on to subclavius subclavius is not a very important muscle it's a very small muscle which actually functions to uh, basically stabilize the clavicle as the name states sub means below and clavius is the clavicle so it's just beneath the clavicle as we can see its origin is coming from the sternum and starting at the clavicle and it functions to function and depresses the clavicle downwards uh it's innervation uh it's not that important we just uh, assume that the nerve which is uh, sub, the nerve that is supplying to subclavius uh is the innervation of the um subclavius muscle so this image basically um summarizes all the muscle that we have studied up till now so we have this is the muscle that is the pectoralis major uh, we can see its origins if we reflect if we dissect this pectoralis major we will be able to appreciate the pectoralis minor and this is the subclavius muscle so up till now we have done three uh, we have actually done four uh, this is the serratus anterior uh, which you guys can see this is the serratus anterior okay 